It's been 75 years since E.B. White's first children's novel about an enchanting mouse, small in size but big in spirit, delighted readers. The book was Stuart Little. It came out in 1945. Although E.B. White was not originally from Maine, he spent much of his life starting in childhood here, and his novels are injected with the state's imagery and spirit. 207's Beth McAvoy chatted with E.B.'s granddaughter, Martha White, from her home in Rockport about her grandfather's enduring legacy. One of those children's books that seems so unlikely today to still be on the shelves and being read, you know, everything goes wrong for Stuart and he keeps almost dying and, he, you know, he's a boy that looks like a mouse. No author in their right mind would try even to write a story like that today. What do you think it is about Stuart Little that has stood the test of time. The writing, I think. He falls in love with a bird and then he falls in love with a young girl. I mean, it, it's it's completely implausible. But I think the writing carries it along. You know, the writing is so poetic and so magical. And, and of course, much of it very about Maine and the natural world. And he doesn't specify Maine, but I, I think that's really part of what E.B. Was, was thinking about, was the, the lakes and, and woods. and. That, that beautiful passage at the end with the, the line man where he's talking about going north and how, how going north is always a good decision. It, you know, I think it resonates with, with certainly people in the Northeast. E.B. was inspired to write Stuart Little because he had a dream about a boy who acted like a mouse. Can you tell me a little bit about where the idea came from for the book? The book was published in 1945, and my grandfather then was still working in New York for the New Yorker, and, and but owned uh, property here in Maine and, and was commuting back and forth, and, and a fair bit of that was on trains. And so I think he had a dream uh, on a train. He used to say how much he loved sleeping on the train because of the, the motion. And it was about a, a boy mouse. It, you know, there's a lot of Stuart that resembles my grandfather. You know, he's kind of a dapper, wiry young man, and and uh, he falls in love hard, and you know, has very similar characteristics in many ways as as my grandfather did. And he first wrote the story it was because he had young nieces who would ask him to tell them a story, and and he he was never good at coming up with something just you know off the top of his head so he would write down something in advance of their coming so that he would have a story to tell them and that that dream became some early chapters that he first told to his nieces and then turned into a children's book my old copy that he gave me when i was about 10 <laughs> it has it has his inscription on the, in the front and he gave it to me in 1962 when i think i was eight he must have considered it the right moment for me to to read it to myself what kind of a grandfather was eb white oh he was a terrific grandfather <laughs> He was, he was a grandfather that you went into the great outdoors with. You know, we didn't spend time inside particularly with him. People always ask me, oh, did he read to you? And no, that, that was my grandmother who would have been doing that. But with my grandfather, we would go out into the barn and collect the hens, you know, eggs or go down to the shore and, and play in the water or collect you see glass or stones or, or walk into the woods with the dogs. He loved being outdoors and he loved children. He was very comfortable with young children. He was a terrific, very hands-on grandfather. What does it mean to you to carry on his name and to celebrate the 75th anniversary of one of his beloved children's novels? Well, it's a privilege, of course. It's wonderful to watch how these children's books have, have stood the test of time. And I think it's also been interesting to me to see how timely they are, how the message really carries on, you know, through through the years. Recently, I put together a book of essays of his called E.B. White on Democracy, and I realized that each of the children's books had a little bit in them about freedom and democracy, and that, that sense of uh, how it's beholden on each of us to, to carry that forward. And I thought, boy, that's a message that that um, still rings so true today, you know, that democracy is something that you need to protect. And it's right there in Stuart Little, you know, when he goes into the, the schoolroom as the substitute teacher, and they're talking about what should be a law and how a law should be fair to everybody. You know, it's all right there. And, and I think 
that's uh, that's what I notice and that's what I feel so privileged to be you know a part of of carrying forward uh, with his books now the library in Brooklyn Maine where E.B. White had a home is celebrating the 75th anniversary of Stuart Little E.B. White lived on the farm in Brooklyn for 48 years where he and his wife New Yorker editor Catherine Angel raised sheep geese chicken pigs even spiders which of course led to Charlotte's Web.